Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I'm going to show you my favorite selection tool, and that is the freehand selection tool. I will give you a lot of secret sauce and tricks on how to use it, so let's get started. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, and wanna thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, another weekly challenge is up, so please join that. It's linked below, it's happening in my Facebook group. Thank you for everybody who has taken part last week, really beautiful entries. And of course, my next live stream is coming up this Sunday, 8 p.m. CET. So I absolutely want you to invite to join that. We had so much fun last time. This time I'm going to edit my own portrait shots and I'm going to show you a variety of things you can do to have really expressive styles and versions of these photos with Affinity Photo and Nick Collection. It's going to be amazing. Okay. Let's get started with this tutorial. And first of all, what is the freehand selection tool? Well, you can find it right over here, this little lasso. So it's also often called the lasso tool. And when you select it, you get up here, this smart bar with different choices. So it's really important to look at that, what that means. Of course, let's start here in the beginning. We have these three different versions. One is freehand, we have polygonal, and then we have magnetic. So let's check that out first. Of course, freehand simply means when you click and hold, you can paint a freehand line like this. It will simply follow wherever you draw with your mouse. So that is kind of easy to understand. The next one is lines as the icon kind of implies. So when you click and select that, what you can do here is that you click and you can see that this will create a new point for every click you do. And then when you double click, it's closing that and creating that selection. Now, the last one is very interesting in the sense that this is magnetic. So it means when you select this tool and you click first and then move your mouse along, this will follow the edge it finds in the image. So that can be useful, but you have seen already here, it has missed that little corner there. But what you can also do is when you click and hold, you are back in the freehand drawing mode. So you can go around areas and then let go of the mouse again, and it will again go into magnetic mode. This is not my favorite mode, to be honest, because it's kind of unpredictable if it's going to get the choice or not. Again, when you double click here, it's closing that into a full circle. So you have a selection, but this is not my favorite choice to do. What I like to do, and this is where the secret sauce comes in, is to use the classic freehand mode, but then you have different shortcuts on your keyboard, which can switch into a polygonal mode and also go to add subtract to create different versions of your selection. I will show you what I mean by that. So let's zoom in here a little bit closer. So we see that shape. And you can see, of course, like I already said, when you click and hold the left mouse button, it simply draws a line and this is going to be your selection. But when you hold the shift key and then make individual clicks, you can see here that this is creating straight lines. And so like that, you are in this polygonal mode that you have up here. So with that, I can quickly make a selection of this leaf here you see like that everywhere to make some clicks and have a really, really quick and also precise selection of that. But there is also another short key that you can use with that. And that is the alt key. When you press it, you can see that the symbol turns into a symbol with a little minus next to it. And that means for us that we are now in the subtract mode. So now when I draw that line here, you can see this is getting subtracted from the original choice. And I can still have my lines when I hold Alt and Shift at the same time and then do individual clicks. You can see that now this has made a selection of straight lines and is subtracting it from the selection we already have. Now here is another way to turn it positive again, and that is when you press Alt and Control at the same time. You can see now it has turned into a plus, and this can be used 
to add other areas in the image to your selection, even if they are not directly connected to the selection you already have. You can see I can make a circle up here and now I have a selection up here and down there at the same time. And when you press Alt, Control and Shift together, you are in an additive mode. So you add to that selection and at the same time you can use straight lines like that. So with that, you are really versatile. You can work really quickly by remembering these combinations. Again, Alt goes into subtractive mode. Alt and Control goes into additive mode. And if you hold Shift with any of these combinations, you go into the polygonal mode, which creates lines from your selection. So with that, you can be super versatile but there is a lot more secret sauce to look into. So first of all, we haven't talked yet about the intersect mode. What is that? Well, basically what it means is if you have an active selection and then you select intersect and draw on your selection like so, you can see that what is left over is where both selection areas are overlapping or in other words, where they are intersecting. Now let's talk about these two functions up here, the feather and the anti-alize. Let's go first for the anti-alize. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to open up here a rectangle with a white background and then also a pixel layer with a black background, which we have up here. Let me zoom into that. Now with anti-alize off, I'm going to make a selection down here of this triangle shape and then let's copy this onto a new layer and move it over here and you can see it has pretty rough edges now let's go back here to that layer and turn anti-alize up here on and make a similar selection like before like so and then again copy that over to a new layer as a pixel selection and you can see here what is happening is that the one that doesn't have anti-alize on, which is the upper one, is pixel exact. So this has a very distinct selection that ends where the pixel ends and doesn't blend anything in between the pixels. So what you're ending up with are these jagged lines. Now, when you have anti-alize on, what it does is it tries to blend medium values in between those pixels to make a smoother selection. And you can see that to the eye, this looks softer and looks more blended. Now, the best way to see the result is when you go to 100%. And here you can see that one of the triangles has rough edges and the other one seems very smooth to the eye. So this is why anti-alize is pretty important. It is also important to notice this anti-alize is different from feathering. Feathering makes a soft blend of the edge of your selection. So let's try this by turning anti-alize off. Go here to feather with one pixel and make another selection down here like so. And you can see now when I copy this over to a new layer, this has a soft edge, but it's much softer than what we have seen with anti-alize, which really tries to have a very narrow blend and make this look really smooth on your screen, while feathering rather gives you kind of a blurred, unsharp edge around your selection, which often also is a good choice. So feathering is a really good thing to often do with your selection if you want to have a softer look to that and especially if the edges are a little bit complex to select. All right, let's go back to our picture and I want to give you another secret sauce here when using the freehand selection tool. And that is when you are in the new mode, that means every time you make a selection, it is replaced by the last selection. But it can happen that sometimes you are clicking accidentally somewhere and then kind of deleting the selection you have done before. Now, of course, you do have while you're selecting the option to use control C and this will bring the last step of your selection back. But 
if you want to make more complex selections, especially in a way where you don't see other selections you have made before because you zoomed in too much, a good backup here is to go to the add mode because no matter what you do here, it's always going to be added and the selection is not going to vanish from your work. So that means if you're, for example, working down here on a selection and then you're going, for example, up here so you can't see the other selection, you can rest assured that the other selection is still there because you are in add mode and it can't simply be replaced by another action. So that's pretty important. And another secret sauce has especially to do when you work on your selection while zoomed in tightly to the image. So let's zoom in here and let's press shift and make our selection around that leaf here like so. And you can see, of course, at this point, I want to move over to the right, but I don't want to use my selection. So hold the shift key and then also press down your mouse wheel. And like that, you can move the canvas. The mouse wheel is also known as the mouse three button. And I'm pretty sure you can adjust this to any kind of other choice in your preferences if you want to if you don't have a mouse wheel or your mouse wheel cannot be clicked. But you can see I can quickly work my way through the selection here and make a really nice and tight selection of these leaves here. So that's it for today. Please leave a like if you enjoyed that tutorial because that really helps my channel. And I hope I see you on Sunday in my live stream. Have a nice day. Bye.